This is the Learn for Lesson 1.7, Translating English Phrases and Algebraic Expressions. This is to get us ready for Chapter 2, where we work with equations. Our major objective, again, translating English phrases into algebraic expressions. Now, there are some key phrases that describe the various operations in math, and we'll take a look at this. Now, much of this you don't need to put into your notes, but as background, I would suggest at least a few. So what are the operations that they're talking about here? Well, for addition, the words add, sum, plus, more than, increase by, the total. All these are key words that indicate addition. Now for subtraction, subtract from, the difference, minus, less than, decreased by, less. For multiplication, multiply. Now again, a key word you're going to see often is the word product. Product of something indicates multiplication. Times, twice something, double, triple, all indicate multiplication. Division, divide. Now a word that I would note is quotient. When you see the word quotient, they're indicating a division. Now, what does a quotient look like? Well, believe it or not, it looks like a fraction. A divided by B. This is in its quotient form. So if they use the word quotient, it's a form of a fraction, as is a ratio. A to B. And then we have exponents, raising something to a power the square of, the cube of, some key words. Now, another important item is throughout this, they're going to suggest, as we go into algebra, the use of a letter such as X or Y or A or B as a number. Again, the number implies the use of a variable, an unknown quantity. In your notes, you're going to put a concept check, and it says determine the keyword or phrase that does not translate into the given operation. So take a moment. Well, looking through these, all of them are multiplication except this one, which we asked you to write up as division, a quotient. All right, let's go on to part two. And for the item two, subtraction, which one does not indicate subtraction here? And carefully looking at them, more than would not indicate subtraction. Okay. Now, for example one, again, you're going to write some of this, uh, particularly the algebraic expression, just to give you some background on this. So example one, part A. We are asked to have the English phrase, what would be the equivalent algebraic expression? Now, for these, I suggest you pause at this point. 
note some of these and then it's algebraic expression equivalence. So z plus 3, that's pretty straightforward. 3 added to z, the sum of z and 3, 3 more than a number. z increased by 3. So a number of ways to say it, this is the results. Now in part b, the product, again, the keyword product indicates multiplication of 3 and x. 3 times a number. 3 multiplied by a number represented by x. All right, part C. Now, twice the sum. Key throughout this, when we indicate a sum, and there's a series of terms in that sum, we use a parenthesis to indicate that. So twice would be the two, and the sum then of x and one, again, the keyword sum requires a parenthesis to group what we are talking about as a single unit. And these are others. Now, notice in D, twice x plus 1. That's different. They didn't say sum here. Or, in this case, the sum of twice x and 1. There's a little subtle difference between these two that you need to be uh, alerted to. All right, let's move it up a little bit. Now, for letter D, here we have the difference between 5 times a number and 3. So the difference is indicated by a negative sign. And here, order is important. And take a moment, read these others. Now for F, the quotient, again, they're showing the fraction form. Now another way of writing this might be a number divided by 6. That would be more the arithmetic way of writing it. All right, letter G, the square of a number, a number squared, and the cube of a number for H, a number cubed. Now, for example, two, change each phrase into an equivalent algebraic expression. A, the number of minutes in H hours. Here you would have to know how many minutes are in an hour. So 60 minutes times the number of hours. 60 times the number of hours gives you the results of this. Now for part B, this one's a little tricky and I've seen students mess up on this on a test. The cost of running a truck for one day driving eight X miles $30 to rent the truck and then 25 cents per mile. So again, $30 to rent the truck plus, now miles, I want you to use X for it. Now how do I write 25 cents? Well, 0.25. 
what I find sometimes students have done in the past is they've written 30 plus 25 X. They did not put the decimal there. So in a sense, this reads $30 a day and $25 without the dot there per mile. <laughs> that would be quite expensive. So again, the use of the decimal form to indicate cents was crucial. Now, as we mentioned, when reading a math book, a text of math problems, you have to read it very carefully because not putting it in its proper form, you don't get the right answer. So for something like this, the quotient, again, one of our keywords of y in 5, the y would be in the numerator and 5 in the denominator. Now, if you said it a different way, the quotient of 5 and y, you see how it's reversed. Now, the difference between 6 and x, 6 and x, this is the difference. The difference between x and 6. Now, again, not reading that properly and not getting it in its correct form, you're going to get the wrong answer. Now, we have a word where things like this is critical and maybe not that clear. And I want you to write this word in your uh, notes as well. That word is when something is not particularly clear, we say it is ambiguous. Now, what does that mean? Well, again, you're not quite sure what it means. Could mean this or it could mean that. Comes from the Latin verb ambos, which means both. And that's from the Spanish there. So an ambiguous phrase is one whose meaning is not clear and may be interpreted more than one way. That is, this way or that way. All right, word for a vocabulary. Not reading this correctly may result in that. We'll pause and look this over and note the difference of what's going on here. So, for instance, here it's 7 times the sum of this, 6 times the difference of this, and then 7n plus 1. Notice that this and this could easily be misconstrued. And we may use the word ambiguous here. What does it mean? So let's go down and take a look at this. Where, again, things may not be that clear. We're going to call this example 3, part A. 5x, the product of 5 and a number. 2n plus 8, twice a number, increased by 8. Now, three times the difference between a number and two. So here you had to use parentheses to indicate a difference. Uh, three times the sum between the a number and two. Again, reading it carefully to get the correct algebraic version of it. And here explains in some detail, pause, read it. 
says, I can do mathematics. I just have trouble solving word problems. Again, because you have to read it carefully, reread it, make a diagram, try to see what they're asking, and then put it into the algebra as we indicate here. And, so, and of course, practice is important for this. So let's go on to example four now, where we are asked to write. Here's the equation. Put it into writing. Now, rather than my reading this, I'm going to just have you write A down and then a solution. But keeping in mind that if you were to do this on your own, your solution, your written words may be somewhat different because there's a number of ways to translate from English into algebra and algebra into English. There's no one way for every student. And they indicate that here in the note. So again, pause, look this over. And this completes lesson 1.7. Now we're going on to our second chapter now where we start algebraic equations.